Okay, so you guys, welcome back to another Axel Institute video. Today again, joined by Frack Ali. It's always a pleasure to speak to you, mate. How are we, mate? Yeah, I'm good, Alex. How about yourself, man? Doing very well, thank you. I see that you're repping the new gear. You've got this new sponsor on the go. We'll just touch straight on it. How's it How's it been and how is it to always, and how important is it to have good sponsors around you? Yeah, I'm very grateful to have uh, Hype Energy uh, around me. They're sponsored uh, in Saudi Arabia, Daniel Dubois, so I'm very privileged that they've seen uh, something special in me anyway to get the brand out so yeah appreciate them a lot of course and going into this fight it's a it's a very big fight for them to be coming on four and obviously we spoke you spoke about your opponent up there and so just for the people who may not know who is your opponent and what's he got to offer yeah my opponent's name is uh, kevin Tranner. i know he's not from the uk but i know a lot of uh, uk fighters they avoid him as far as i know he's only boxed two uk fighters all the rest have been abroad and he's always in like eight round fights, 10 round fights. And I'm, if I'm aware, his last fight was a 12 round title fight as well. So uh, I'm ready for the challenge, man. And today I'm here to fight and uh, Kevin's gonna bring some art of me what no one else does. And like you also were saying up there, obviously you got dropped in the Louis Norman fight, but then in the opponent which you fought next was another opponent who was meant to be tough and try and be on your chest. And you managed to deal with that very well. Do you feel like you kind of have the recipe to deal with fighters who are going to be wanting to be on your chest and wanting to come and have a fight? Of course, yeah. Like now with uh, sparring and stuff like that, we've got uh, opponents who are coming forward on my chest and I've got a box and move kind of thing. Uh, but with this kid, obviously, I can't just box and move. I have to flat my feet as well and trade in with him at times because he's got to respect my power as well. End of the day, yeah, he's, he's a banger and he, he can do this and he can do that, but I've got to keep him off. I've got to show my strengths as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. Like... Uh, He's going to be my hardest fight, so yeah, I'm buzzing, man, I'm buzzing, yeah. And obviously you want to be continuing developing and going into 2024, is there any kind of resolutions for boxing that you have? Well, put it like this, if I don't get, if I don't get past Kevin Trana on the uh, on next show, uh, I'll stop boxing, simple as that. And uh, if I can't beat Kevin, what's to say I'm going to get an English title? What's to say I'm going to get a British title? What am I doing it for? But yeah. Like I said on stage then, a lot of people have been calling Easy going, oh, hey, why have you put a fracking with Kevin Trana? That he's not one of them kids who's just going to tuck up and just give him the rounds. He's going to be a nightmare. And uh, I know when Izzy told me this, I kind of laughed and I kind of like shrugged it off thinking, okay, that gives me more of a, a bit of a encouragement, you know what I mean, to put on a display and show to everyone really, to be fair with you, like uh, I've done easy work on him. So yeah, I can't wait, I can't wait. Of course, and certain fights especially, at this level, if you haven't got that kind of oomph to get you going and to get you into the fight, sometimes maybe you can look a bit flatter or just maybe not put your best performance. But do you feel like now you're more than motivated than ever to put out your best performance? Yeah, because if I don't be on point with this fight, I'll be honest with you, Kevin Trana will punch me pillar to post. And it is simple as that. So I know I've got to be 110% on my A game because even if I'm 1% short, he will bash me up and it's simple as that. So I know how much of a risk it is. And uh, like I've said constantly, I'm here for the uh, I'm here for the challenge, and I can't wait. Yeah, can't wait to put on a show for everyone. And of course, like you've mentioned, you wanted to be this kind of first major person to get a title for GBM, being the first fighter from there as well. Do you feel like that maybe comes with a little bit of added pressure? Uh, well, I'm not gonna lie to you. I put a lot of pressure on myself. It doesn't matter what no one else says to me. I won't really take it on board. I put the pressure on myself because I perform best under pressure. My last few fights. I, my last fight, especially people were saying, look, Frack, if this kid lands on you, he's knocking you out cold. It's simple as that. And look what I did. You were there yourself. You've seen it. Boxed the move, made it easy nights. Same with this kid. If I'm not on point, he's going to be on my chest and bully me about. So uh, I perform best in the pressure anyway. So, yeah, I can't wait. Honestly, can't wait. And do you feel like skills-wise, you are also constantly improving? Obviously, you're improving your opponents, but skills-wise in the gym as well, do you feel like that's improving? Oh yeah, 100%. I've always had a boxing ability. The only issue with me is because I took about seven, eight years out from boxing, obviously you, it kind of deteriorates a bit, but now obviously getting back into the flow of stuff, always in the gym, this, 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 it's starting to come back now. So yeah, you like I've always said in my last few fights, you're always going to see something new in me, like with this one as well, you're going to see something different. So yeah, I can't wait to show you what I've got in store anyway. I'm excited as well. And in the way of having this kind of routine that you've got going now, a lot of people, I mean most people, you want to have a routine, you want to be comfortable and wake up and know what you're going to do for the day and now you've got that with boxing, is that just helping even more? Of course, yeah, I'm one of them people, I like to structure my day out. 
I'm not one of them. I can't just wake up and, you know what I mean, just go with the flow. I've got to know the day in advance. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. It helps me prepare mentally as well, as well as physically. So, yeah, I like structure in my life. And uh, especially with this fight here, I've been getting up a lot earlier for my runs. I've been on my diet a lot better. I know five weeks out, my, I'm pretty much already on weight now as well. So, yeah, I'm not looking past Kevin Trano whatsoever because I know a loss to him is me done. And it is simple as that. And uh, that's it, simple as that. If I lose, I'm done. And if I, when I beat him, I'm just going to carry on and get a title next fight after. So, yeah. Do you ever have any kind of thoughts about stuff like the outside stuff, like possibly eating bad food or going out or anything like that? Does that ever creep into your mind when you're during such a, such a strict camp? No, I'm not going to lie to you. With my diet and stuff, I am very strict. Like for the past, uh, I've been in camp now about 10 weeks. I've just locked myself at home. I'll go gym, work, and I lock myself up. Even on weekends, I just lock myself at home. I'm not one of them kids who just goes out, parties and this and that. Nah, I will lock myself at home, take my way from the distractions, and I'll focus strictly on training. Because at the end of the day, no one's going to get inside that ring and punch for me. At the end of the day, I'm doing that myself, so I account myself accountable for everything. And if I know in the back of my head, I went out to that party last night, or I had that takeaway last night, it's going to uh, affect my performance, so yeah, uh, it is what it is, yeah. Would you say that you don't really want to live with any kind of regrets? 100%. I live life with no regrets, but obviously uh, you don't want to cheat yourself either. You want to give 110%, whether it be boxing or in life or work, anything. Give you all and whatever happens at the end of the day. God's already got everything written for you. All you can do is work to the best of your ability. And as long as you know deep down in your heart you've done everything, you can walk away satisfied and it's simple. And just the one final message for the fans that are, of course, always coming numbers for you. What would you like to say, mate? Listen, I appreciate every single one, uh, whoever comes out and supports me. For this one, I've got quite a few people travelling out from the Middle East as well uh, to watch me fight as well because I've told them, listen, this is a proper real fight and they're actually flying over, uh, I think, in about a week or two. So they are going to be here for a bit of lengthy time as well. So, yeah, uh, I can't wait to perform in front of everyone anyway. Like I'm saying, by bringing these A-listers out to the uh, UK and watch me fight, it's going to give me that extra push when I'm fighting. And obviously, you know, I'm backed against the wall. I can't lose in front of these people, no chance. Amazing, mate. Well, always a pleasure speaking to you. I'm going to try my best to be there for final night against you. Great performance, and uh, I wish you the best of luck, mate. I appreciate that, Alex, every time. Thank you.